And welcome in to Coinless Reconnection. I'm Brandon Shanahan, joined by Brooke Byrne, Tyler Sprinkle, and Tyler's chair. Also, Brett Sprinkle's here as well, a cool. friend of the show. Welcome in, Brett. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Always excited to be here, as always. Absolutely. I wish you would have worn, I don't know, any other sweater, but it is what it is. <laughs> I feel like my Iowa sweatshirt always has to make at least one appearance mm. anytime I'm on this show. I, mean, I got some new So I can see the look on to. Brooke's face. I didn't know Dollar General was having a sale today. <laughs> <laughs> well, outstanding stuff. Yet again, another outstanding week of uh, of college football. Another one coming up, so we got lots to get into. First uh, thing I kind of wanted to to get into and kind of recapping last week as a as a whole was any real big surprises. The big surprise for me what was Notre Dame getting run over by Louisville. Uh, whoever put together Notre Dame schedule is just is not not nice to them it just seems like a, a tough draw having to go play Iowa State or Ohio State in a big game play a very experienced team in Duke on the road and then having to go to Louisville and a very now well coached team with uh, the barometer over there and then also having to play USC next week not even talking with the last three weeks and especially with the with, with the team like that who really had an easy couple of first weeks and then just getting thrown into the fire right away tough draw but that was kind of my big takeaway over the weekend i wish i would have known when we were recording last week that when sam hartman was at wake forest he statistically the last two years he was at wake forest had his worst games against louisville i did not know that so for whatever reason, when he plays Louisville, that D coordinator gets the best of him. So, yeah, what the hell? I felt like that should have been on a billboard somewhere. Yeah, who didn't do their fucking work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's crazy that Louisville is your, is your bugaboo out of all those teams in the ACC. Not Clemson, <laughs> not not Miami, not Florida State, Louisville. And I wanted to ask that. you guys how you felt. I saw Sunday morning they released the uh, the betting lines for this coming week. Notre Dame USC is essentially a pick 'em. It was like a one point spread. I mean, I know USC's defense is really struggling right now, but you got to think the way that Notre Dame is looking. It should. Oh my god! It should be easy money picking USC. No, that's I mean, there's got to be not. something I'm not thinking about. But yeah, it, and that's just what I was gonna say. It makes my hands a little sweaty. It's like I, what do they know that I don't? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly my thoughts. <laughs> We were all kind of thinking the same thing there, but. But I wonder if that's how they get people to bet the other side. They're like, something's got to be up. <laughs> like, we, it's got to bet Notre Dame, and then yeah. USC inevitably ends up winning, so they make all their money. Notre Dame has a good defense, but I don't think they're good enough to slow down Caleb Williams. Yeah, the only thing is USC's been struggling against two yeah. teams that they should have beat very easily. Um. I don't know. It's gonna. I guess it's gonna be a fun thing to watch. See if, if Caleb Williams still has the Eisman in him, and and see how that uh, USC defense can stop Sam Hartman. If are they in South Bend or are they in California? Yeah, South, South Bend. Prime time, I think too. Yeah, South Bend. Mm. So, if I mean, Notre that's Dame not, can run the ball like they want to, that can make it closer because USC's defense is bad. But you would think at some point USC would be able to stop the run, but who knows? I mean, when I think quintessential, like, football rivalries, football matchups, especially in the month of October, like, USC Notre Dame gets me fired up, to be honest. Like, you just get goosebumps because you yeah. think about all the, like, the really close games, the last second field goals, and just that crowd just gets so hype up there in Indiana. It's insane. So I I, 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 I can honestly see why the uh, line makers made it a toss-up because when you're in that type of atmosphere, you never really know. I still like USC to win by a touchdown. It would be really nice to be able to watch that game, but this prick I know is getting married this weekend, so I won't be. Is he going to have TVs Let's at the reception? I hope. He says uh, he's what, gonna be he's ball, what are you so. going to do? If he doesn't, what are you going to do? I mean. Listen, I'm going to have both my laptops set up <laughs> in a corner. We're going to put them in the bathroom. Yeah. Everyone's going to be like, where are those guys at? And they're all going to be in the bathroom watching the games. Pissing in sinks. Yeah. <laughs> watching the game on the toilet and pissing in sinks. <laughs> You gotta think we're a bunch um, of coke that's spending that much time in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, but it is weird to watch USC or uh, Notre Dame, excuse me, this year because like they lose a close game against uh you know Ohio State. You used to brain fart, and then they go in and they beat Duke seemingly pretty easily. 
Um, I was sweating out my uh, Notre Dame minus seven in that game. That was oh, fun, yeah. That was a fun game to sweat. And then <laughs> go out and lose to Louisville. And now you got USC. I don't know. I just feel like they're just one game after another, like a gauntlet. Like, when are they going to break? And I think this might be when they break, like, fully. You got to think with two losses now on their schedule and not having a conference championship available to them that they're probably thinking their CFP hopes are dead. Yeah, it's soupy or suey season and they're full suey. Yeah. So I don't know how much they have to get up for, really. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm thinking because I, I, I'm usually pretty big on, like, who wants this game more and who's more desperate for it. Uh, Hungry dog and, runs faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And Notre Dame, if they'd won, if they'd pulled it out against Louisville last week, that's kind of where, where I'd be leaning this week. But now with two losses, uh, especially it's kind of a the way that that game unfolded against Louisville, it – it, I don't even think it was as close as like the score indicated. Louisville was all over the place in that game, and it, it just kind of feels like I could see this being a game where the wind gets taken out of the sails. But you know that's where good coaching comes in, getting your team dialed in. So we'll see what uh, Marcus Freeman has up his sleeve in that way. And I'm glad you mentioned coaching because I'm a big fan of Marcus Freeman. I hated Notre Dame when Brian Kelly was the coach because I fucking can't stand Brian Kelly. But I'm a really big fan of Marcus Freeman. I think he's I think he's going to end up being a very good coach and I already I already enjoy watching Notre Dame so much more with him at, in the, his second year as head coach than I ever did under the Kelly regime to be honest. And I will not stand for Sam Hartman's slander online but I'm seeing a lot of it and uh, some people are saying he was anointed too early. No, Sam Hartman's still the guy. He's still attractive and he's still going to throw dimes on Saturday. You know, and that kind of leads me into my next question for you because I know this is definitely the case with me, so no shame in this. Do you like Marcus Freeman and Sam Hartman because you think that they're a good coach and quarterback combo, or do you just have a crush on them? Because I know I do. And yeah, a little problem, a little problem, problem to be honest. Yeah. It's like, like objectively, the Jimmy effect. <laughs> objectively good-looking males. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, probably sometimes the best you got to call it like you see it, you know? Yeah. I mean, sometimes probably the best-looking head coach QB duo since a Coach O and Joe Burrow. Just, <laughs> just pull out. <laughs> but uh, I kind of skipped over my first point here. Nebraska won. How about that? They did. I was, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hyped. I was juiced. I had to watch it on tape delay. I was working that yeah. night, so I was up to like two in the morning. Right. Uh, if you roll your eyes again, I'm a sucker. <laughs> Dude, that was the most boring game I've ever watched. I was telling Brandon this yesterday, but like I was working at my bar. The game started at seven, I'm sure. But I looked up; it was eleven. I thought the game started at five, and it was still in the third quarter. And it's just like, why is this game still happening? Why it is was it the longest, longest low-scoring game I have ever seen in my whole entire life. <laughs> I just—it was very boring. Um, but a win's a win's a win's a win. So here we are. Matt Rule, fastest of three wins over any program that he's been at Temple, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and to do it with. with- Heinrich Harburg is really just a testament to his coaching. Tyler's favorite quarterback. I'm washing my damn hands of this this week. Um, there's some clips circulating around the internet of me. Um, I'm not going to let Brandon do this to me again. I'm going to be happy, and uh, you can take your Harburg and shove it. I'll, no, I'll I, fight the good fight for you this week. <laughs> thank you. No, and I'll, and I'll walk – well, first of all, that's exactly why I wanted Jeffson or why I wanted Henrik Harburg to, to play is he's – he had that one bad interception. I can't Damn, overlook that. Even so. my yeah. even my <laughs> bad uh, – my Heisman Harburg propaganda train, I, I can't excuse that interception. That's bad. Um, 50% it, completion percentage isn't good either, my friend. Okay, okay. I, I guess I have to throw out this disclaimer every time I talk about Henrik Harburg. I don't think he's a good quarterback. However, oh, it's really hard to tell. It's I mean, I do a little tell. bit of research. There's you a whole video I every time you mention his name. Yeah, uh, that's my phone autocorrecting. I, I can't. I, you, I'm not. Gonna... You speak through your autocorrect on your phone. <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> it's your mouth on autocorrect. <laughs> so, so here's what I'm getting at. First of all, I don't think Henrik Harburg is good. I don't. I get back in this corner where I have to defend him not being a disaster. So let me get that out of the way. However, mm-hmm. where we're at today, I'm very excited about the potential of Jeff Sims coming back healthy after the bye week. It just amazes me how much that Harburg does wrong. And if you watch Rule on the sideline, you can just tell he's about at his wit's end with him at times. Mm-hmm. 
Um, right, just has saliva coming out of his mouth. Nothing there. embodied that more than when Nebraska was trying to knee the ball out, and he told him, wait till 35 seconds on the game clock to knee it out. And he snaps the ball at like 43, and they pan over to rule, and he's losing his goddamn mind. Like, just simple things. But, I mean, I digress. He was good enough to win, which isn't saying isn't much. saying much. Whoa. Jeez, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Same I mean, way. For a team who didn't win their third game until November last year. I, I think that is saying it a lot. So it is what it is. No, and but, I am I'm very happy that we won. Um it's just yeah, he had that one interception, but like whatever, it's gonna happen sometimes in college, it's just a bonehead play. Um my thing is like the overthrows and the underthrows. Like the two two the long the two long passes that he had, the two long completions, both of them were underthrown by like ten yards. And if the if the wide receiver wasn't paying attention to adjust to run back to the ball, then those are just falling short. Um, which whatever. I mean, yeah, it was windy. Maybe you can give him a break for it. But it's just hard to overlook those kinds of things when you're trying to. I mean, you still, like I said, you still have a shot to win the Big Ten West. You still have a shot. Mm-hmm. But we need everybody to play like they should be there and. He leaves something to be desired, I guess is what I'll say. Yeah. And I'll, and you know, I, I think out of all of us, I, I have very much been the happiest with, with Henry Carberg, but I'm, I'm excited to go into this bye week. Hopefully, Jeff Sims gets healthy, um, enough to, to be a hundred percent. Um, cause I think, and, and not even just this year, but I, I've already heard people started starting to talk about next year. Like the, the brightest timeline is, is still and always has been Jeff Sims. Uh, I mean, having to go out and get another transfer when we need to fill so many different holes on this offense and defense, or mostly this offense, it just feels crazy to me that we're already talking about off-season quarterback stuff. Yeah. Um, Because, yeah, the the brightest timeline is Jeff Sims. And if he comes out, and I'm hoping, and because in my dumb head, I'm thinking all of those, some a lot of those big mistakes early on where he was absolutely hands down a disaster. Don't let Tyler tell you anything other than that. It feels all mental and like he just wasn't maybe dialed in or maybe wasn't as prepared as we would have hoped. He's had two months now since that Colorado game by the time that we get going. Um, so hopefully he's just kind of caught up a little bit more watching more film, watching the speed of the game, watching what, you know, a, uh, what a bad quarterback can do in this system and how the, he can find ways to win by just doing things like taking care of the football, running, hard and running fast and hopefully he can kind of implement that in his own style which you know higher ceiling for sure well i just hope he gets the chance to run the ball i need someone to clip brandon saying that heinrich harberg was bad real quick you can you can clip that one or you can clip that 18 other times i've said henrik harberg (laughs) is not a good quarterback no i didn't hear any of that actually yeah i think you're gonna uh, scrub from the web i mean mike no it's it's all still up there now granted you will also (laughs) equally see as many tweets that say Heisman Harburg. So I, I guess I'll, yeah, I think I'll that's, that a Heisman Harburg. I mean, that's pretty, I mean, it's pretty sick alliteration. I'm a big fan of that. So I'm actually, on that's board. mostly what it is. Yeah. Heisman Harburg. Fuck. Yeah. But he does. Wait, so hold on. What? Name. Uh, and excuse me for my Nebraska in- ignorance. Uh, mm-hmm. Sims is what year? Junior. Okay. So I'm happy he's, he's finally learning how to play quarterback at the collegiate level. And then what year is Harburg? Sophomore. 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 Okay, so the future is bright for you guys. You got two years well, of the Sims regime, and then you move on to Heisman Harbor. You guys, guys, we actually I, have something going on. I gotta <laughs> I go. Like, I like what like you guys have going on over here. Jesus. I, no, but uh, if I could be serious, I'll, I'll be serious. I, I, I'll give you guys a break. Um, I know. I think this season is all about laying the foundation for the type of program that Matt Rule wants to build. You get the, you get the recru- recru- the good recruiting classes in. You build up your offensive line, your defensive line. You know, you get the trenches settled, and then you see what's out there in the transfer portal. And who knows? Maybe you do go get a quarterback. You know, who's a ju- you know another junior or maybe even a senior, and that he's a better fit for Matt Rule's system. And you guys win eight games next year. I think that'd be a, a you know a marketed improvement over what the team is doing right now. I you still know, think that is a as bad as Harvard has been. At least he had more than six completions. I thought that was pretty cool. If yeah, I hate it, what the what old like fogies at the pass. Omaha World Herald are doing to us right now by putting that 
we don't know who's gonna or we don't know who's gonna be our quarterback he- heading into next year when we're only halfway through the season yeah. this year. Mm-hmm. Some of those good. guys at the Omaha World Herald are insufferable talking about that stuff. I think I read Stephen Sipple or whoever it was was saying he would bet on it right now. He doesn't think the starting quarterback from for next year is on our roster currently. Which I mean, he could be right. I mean, they could go with the. Um, I'm sorry that that young man from Bellevue West, um, Kalen. DK. Yeah, I mean, maybe we go with him right off the bat. I mean, I wouldn't think so, but it's possible. He's not bad from what I've seen, but he. I would like to see what he can do against, you know, college athletes first. Yeah, yeah it seems like to go a, a, a mighty big jump from from Nebraska high school football to, to Big Ten football. I will say yeah. he's probably getting a pretty good look at college defenses when he plays West Side because if you guys yeah. haven't seen them play yet, they are the truth. Yeah, they are really good. Um, yeah, I want to talk – I want to start getting into, like, some of the nitty-gritty of the game. Um, obviously – Marcus Washington went down. Um, I haven't heard anything about it. I don't know if you guys know anything. I haven't um, seen anything yeah. it, since. It, it was a non-contact injury, it seems. He just went down grabbing his knee, so hopefully he's all right. Um, so another fucking wide receiver down. But at least Malachi came out and, uh, you know, he had his first catch. He's a, He's been a great blocker when he's out there, um, and that's usually the last thing that they learn to be good at. Um, coming into college, but I mean, he's a fucking tank, so he should be able to to throw some guys around. Um, so I'm, he looked really good. Everything I saw from him, he looked really good. He was running his routes hard. Uh, he was able to get open, which I was surprised about because again, that's another thing that is uh, normally the last thing you learn in college when you first get there. Um, so there's a lot of bright things to look at. Billy Kemp looked pretty good. Um, still super slow. Like why? My God. Um, anytime you see anybody that's like 5'8", you think they're going to be fast. And Figure you that's the appeal you. that small. And at least yeah. you would think he would be like twitchy and could make moves. And yeah. that is just not the case. Yeah. Um, Bullock looked really pretty solid. Uh, I think he did have one drop. Um, he did have but a he, couple of big catches on third down, though. Bullock. Yeah, the big – yes. Yeah, he, he played a big part in getting down that field consistently. Um, Alvano hitting some some field goals. Yeah, eat your sometimes, words, Brandon Shanahan. Yeah, sometimes I mean, you just need I, to yeah. to lay up and see the ball go through the net. You know. Yeah. Um. um I, I wish that we had a kicker who could make a field goal in Memorial Stadium. Um. But I am very happy with Alvano. J- jokes aside, I am. I feel. I am relieved, and I think yeah. you get um you get a pass for a couple of misses when you get a thirty yard onside kick recovery. Yeah. yeah. I think for me watching the game, you wouldn't have thought it right away, but I really truly think the game was won by our defense that first drive. The way Illinois went up and down the field on us and then to just stand them up on the goal line like that really broke their offense's will right away. Yeah, they didn't look the same after that. And then our offense seemingly had their best drive, you know, coming back down the field that first drive. So we really set the tone there, which is nice to see. But our defense, like Rule has been preaching, has to be the elite, elite part of our team right now until our offense can figure it out. Yeah, I totally forgot about about that goal line stand, and I don't know how. Oh, man. Because that was sick. It was so – I mean, and then it ended up being a 10-point swing because we drive the field and get a field goal, which – yeah, you'd rather have a a touchdown there, but, I mean – Still a ten point swing going all the way from the one yard or half inch line. I mean, yeah, you're juiced. So juiced. that was a big, a big I, tone setter. Satterfield's best play call through six games on our own one because we were not running the ball there on the, our own one yard line. Did you say the the long pass to Washington was the best play yeah, call? Yeah, absolutely. Because we um, we were we weren't going to get a first down running the ball there. And that was one yeah. of those. Uh, I'm sure Satterfield said, "Hey Harburg, just go ahead and underthrow this ball." Um, <laughs> you know, Marcus knows how to come back and get it. So, um, uh, yeah, I'll just the right team. It so. is. Uh, 
anyways, Brandon, I'm not going to get into this with you again. Nope. This is going to be this a, a happy show. Podcast. We're very yeah. excited. There's a lot to be happy about here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. It was a ballsy call. And uh, normally we haven't done that so far this year. Like take shots, shots like that. Um, so it was good to see. It was fun. Uh, Anthony Grant did have a fumble again, which kind of stunk. But so did Ramir. Or uh, excuse me, not Ramir. Uh, Emmett, is that his name? Emmett Johnson, Johnson, I think. Yeah. Um, he had a fumble. And then the pick, yeah. I mean, overall, a pretty decent game. We we were doing the things, the easy things right, which uh, goes a long way into winning football games. So, Yeah, where I feel the best is it just kind of feels like, especially with those turnovers late, that this was the exact kind of game that the team in the previous regime would find a way to lose. And now, now granted, the defense had to really step up after that, and they forced some turnovers as well. Um, but it just feels a little bit different to see one go our way. And, I mean, I say that. We still won by two touchdowns. Yeah, you know, it didn't it, feel like that, though. Yeah. Toward the end, it did not feel like we were up by two scores. Um, and maybe it's because of what Brandon said, like the previous regime would have lost this game. So maybe that's why it didn't feel safe. Um, but as they were driving with, like, two and a half minutes left. I'm like, Oh no. Like I'd seen this movie too many damn times. Um, and if we feel that way as fans, you got to think some of those guys that have been there three and four yeah. years playing probably feel the same way. So even though it was ugly, like Brandon was saying, it was good to kind of get some of our demons out and see yeah. one go our way. And a big win on a Friday night, low energy against a team that is comparable to us talent wise. Yeah, and as Matt Rule has been preaching, teaching the guys how to win, I think that's a a big step in teaching them how that's to win the difference. games. Yeah, that's the difference, man. Well, outstanding stuff. Um, like I said, I'm just very happy with it. You know, there's not a whole lot of complaints I have. It because it looks like the, the same team that we've had. It does suck that we have you know Melvin Gordon in the backfield, but um, he is the best option. You're at this so point. dramatic. My God. I mean, are you are you not thinking the same thing as somebody who was also so torched by Melvin Gordon, especially having to be RB one quarter of the way through? Because he doesn't last fumble year? every single time, like Melvin Gordon did. Wow, I I, I got to imagine their numbers are pretty comparable. I'll never forget the see. time where Melvin Gordon just would like fumbled like four straight games in a row. At least it felt like it. Yeah, no, no I, I'm pretty did. sure that is accurate. He, he did. did. Yeah. <laughs> And that's yeah. That, that okay. I'll I'll walk that back. That was a bit dramatic. I do love. And this Anthony is Grant. not like in past years. This hasn't been a big issue for Anthony Grant. That's so true. I don't know what's what's going on this year. Um, yeah, this, you don't don't act like this has been a, a consistent thing through his whole career. I like just Melvin think it's Gordon. a drastic different in styles of offense he's played in um, compared to this year where. With Frost and I think what was he was he at Florida State before Nebraska, right? I think so. Either that or more, you know, spread out shotgun offense. He was running through, you know, lighter boxes. But you know the way Matt Rule wants to play football, you know, to line them up, pound the rock, eight guys in the box. There's going to be more opportunities for defenses, you know, to you know try to punch the ball out, and I think. Maybe he's just adjusting to that. Yeah. But. That might be. Still very good stuff. I'm like I said, I'm just happy with it. And it's nice to, to go into the week and not having to like worry about how much my mental health is going to be impacted by this game. And then it's just another weekend for celebrating. So hats off to that. Yeah, you get an extra day to celebrate. You get an extra day to celebrate? Yeah, since it was on Friday. You oh, get all I mean, this oh, Saturday and Friday night. Man, oh, I mean, the how relaxing was it on Saturday? Yeah. Not having to, it was. I just woke up and I was like, let's watch some ball. <laughs> our, our Heisman rankings, Brent. Uh, I'm sorry, Brett, I couldn't get yours uploaded quite in time, but uh, no, pretty okay. so, I, actually, no, Brett's is very different. Let's, let's go through his first, Brett. What was your top five? Break oh, that. Let's pull it up. Um, well, I just want to say. Uh, the big, the, the biggest shocker is I put Travis Hunter in my top five. The only reason is he's still an electric player. It doesn't matter if he hasn't played in like two or three weeks. I still love him to death. He's still one of the best players in the country, in my opinion. He's electric. Um, okay, following well, also, that up, go so ahead. Real quick. So these 
So I, I guess when we get kind of get into to rankings, it, it's important to set the criteria for you guys. Was it if the season ended right now, who's winning the Heisman Trophy, or is it more like forecasting on like mm. when we get to December? I truly, I truly went off feel in my mind. I know Penix is having a great year, but I need to see him do it against Oregon or someone of substance for me to be all the way in on him. And right now, in my mind, after watching Caleb Williams single-handedly bring him back <laughs> last his team back last Saturday, it's his to lose. Yeah, I agree with that. It does feel like a safe bet to just pencil in Lincoln Riley quarterback. Yeah, yeah, one hell of a which makes track it even crazier recently. that yeah, which makes it even crazier that Spencer Rattler didn't work out. Well, you can't fix ugly. I mean, he's so ugly too. I mean, I'm sorry, Spencer. I'm sure you're a great guy, and I'm not the most attractive person in the world. But God damn it, dude! Oh my goodness. I was I was gonna say I could only imagine what he's saying about you guys somewhere. Dude, I mean, I get it. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shy away. I, yeah. I'm 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 high key ugly, but it's just like and I'm not real, famous. Game recognized game. You know nobody I mean? nobody has to look at me like people has to look at him. No way, real recognize real. That's. <laughs> But uh, but thanks for watching, Spence. We we, we appreciate yeah. your, your, your <laughs> we appreciate friend numbers, of the program. The Absolutely, friend of the program, Spencer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, come on anytime. Roast us. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Outstanding stuff. I mean, um, but All yeah, pretty, pretty similar Brett. throughout the board. Um, another one that kind of caught me off guard with, with Brett's ranking was he had uh, Cam Ward at number three. Well, I guess mm-hmm. has been really good. I mean, kind of slept on. So I mean, just, I'm not too. I'm the only one wide awake there, Brandon. Just last week, he didn't I look... I love Cam Ward. Yeah. yeah, I do too, but last week, he didn't look super good. I threw but him what? in there because... So, like, I kind of went the same thing as Brooke. I kind of went off feels. Like, Michael Penix and Caleb Williams are my two favorites. Everywhere else, I just don't think... I know I said... Pe- I, I, I love like, Michael Penix. I, I don't know. I thought it was that yeah, it's my favorite pronunciation. I know it's <laughs> Penix, but I don't care. Anyway, so Caleb Williams and Michael Penix are my two guys that I think are probably going to win the Heisman. They'll be standing there in New York. The other three guys I think are fun guys. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, Jordan Travis, I think he's going to be a finalist as well. But, I mean, Cam Ward, he's fun to watch play. I think Travis Hunter's fun to watch play. And why not have a bunch of – have a couple fun guys in there too? Yeah. I think it makes total sense that you would put the best player from the best team in your top five in Jordan Travis. (laughs) Well, let's settle down there. Well, I mean, wait to see my top ten, Brooke. Spoiler Are you going to hurt my feelings? I don't want to hear. <laughs> Thought about putting Keon Coleman in there. I feel like he's been really good so I far, mean, but I said best uh, player, not third best player. Well, oh, well, wow. Well, I mean. I mean, you don't even have him at number one, Brooke. So what the hell are you talking about? Well, Caleb Williams is just fucking him right now. I don't know what oh. you want from me. Huh? He's fucking who? It's. Is fucking <laughs> comma him? Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Man, wait a minute. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do like Cam Ward in the sense that, like, Max Duggan finished second in the Heisman Trophy last year, and first week in October, nobody knew who he was. Nobody gave a shit about him. Cam Ward definitely seems like he he could absolutely come into that that kind of role and and catch a lot of people off guard come come November and December. I just want to get Tyler and Brett's opinion on this real quick. Some are saying, definitely not me, but some are saying if he wasn't mm-hmm. from Council Bluffs, he would have won it. But I, I was surprised that he that he huh. that he did win it. <laughs> I can go score shirts right here. I fucking hate that entire family. All the Duggins have done is whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, whoa, brother. All the Duggins have oh, done shit. is beat me. Like that's all. I mean, hey, I'm a loser. I don't get me wrong. The only my mind comes out of a position of hate. The Duggins beat my. But in high school, middle school, and then Max Duggan is just a spawn of that. It's just it's just a a, a living proof of my failures as a human being in oh. athletics. And <laughs> don't get me wrong, I was rooting for him, but as soon as that season was over, I was so glad that he didn't win anything. I don't hate you, Max. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan. Come big on the fan. pod. Yeah, thanks Friend. for watching, Max. For another program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got Spencer and Max Duggan. Let's go. Let's go. Self anointed. <laughs> Make sure you put that in the title. Yeah. Max Duggan and Spencer Rather on the show. <laughs> Friends of the program. Yeah. And so kind of averaging it out, here's kind of how our, our Heisman top five shapes up um, versus like the, the betting favorites over at FanDuel. Um, not too not too much difference. Um, I certainly wouldn't Whoa. have had Dylan Gabriel 
up there before last week, but you know, ball I ball. still wouldn't. Um, I don't but get I'm the, surprised that Bo Nix is so high, actually. That's what yeah. I was gonna say. I don't get the Bo Nix love there from FanDuel. Like I mean, I do Gordon I definitely like him. him. I like him in like the number five spot. I'm not sure I like him in number three. Is Caleb I mean, Williams oh sorry. I just to defend Bo Nix here. If you were to go with that, they do they have outscored their opponents by more than any other team in, in power five. So that might I mean, granted, they haven't played anybody really good yet, so, or even yeah. kind of good. So this you know, playing I Iowa do. School of the Blind, you should have those. Yeah. Numbers. Well, but but nobody else does. I mean, not even Michigan. Sure. Yeah, they're still. Well, I guess they're only like twenty five points off. But just to kind of put that in perspective. If Caleb Williams didn't win the Heisman last year, do you think he'd be second? No. I think he'd be first, right? For sure. Well. Because, I, I mean, so. he's the best player in the nation. There's no doubt about it. Like, Michael Penix, uh, Penix Jr. is, like, electric, and he's, like, one of the best players in the country, but Caleb Williams is the best player in the country, in my opinion. There does seem to see some, be some bias. Like, if you win it, um, then they expect you to be even better. And so that's hard to do. Same. I know. So it's it's almost like a, a you're an uphill battle, if you will, uh, trying to win a second Heisman. That's why only one player has ever done it in the history. And I think football. with uh, Michael Penix, he kind of has the feel-good, heartwarming story factor behind yeah. him with going to Indiana and then getting hurt. And now they're trying to sell this narrative. He was going to quit football and then transfers to Washington, and it works out now. But I don't think he was ever going to quit football. But he's fucking slinging it now for Washington. So yeah. good on him. And as I keep saying, I think Washington might be all around – like every part of the game, the best team in the, in the country right now. Um, so that just boosts Michael Penix, uh, Jr. more for Plus, me. they have a sick stadium. Yeah. I love their stadium. Yeah, I love it's their colors. So cool. it's, yeah. it's a different. I mean, actually, like whenever Washington's good, it's just a fun school yeah, room for it. They're just so cool. And it's the same they kind of feel them. like when Oklahoma and Texas are good. It just feels like fun. Like the whole sport is fun for some reason. And also, I want to get a, like a different team in there as opposed to like yeah. the Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, Alabama. A team I, I want to get my – even different from Oregon coming out of the Pac-12. You know what I mean? Washington yeah. is just like they were good like five, ten years ago, I feel like. But then now it's just their back, it feels like. I want to get my 30 seconds of gloating in about being right about Quinn Ewers because he fucking sucked last Saturday. Immediately throws a pick, drive one. What did he end up – three picks? Not it. Uh, something like um, the yeah. first one. I'm trying to remember all of them. The first one, I think the first one was the first the, one was like a the really second bad play one. of the game. Yeah, but I'm and then w- one of them was tipped in the end zone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I can't really remember the third one. I'm not trying to make excuses for him, but um, it is a different feel for that game specifically. Like such a big rivalry game. Neutral site. I don't know. It, yeah, he wasn't as good as i've been making him out to be all year um but i do still think that he's a solid quarterback for college football i just talking think, nfl i don't know but i just think the warning signs were there going into the game with him having like a 58 percent completion percentage against some lower tier teams and he kind of got exposed a little bit oklahoma very good defensive minded head coach and defense overall but yeah, it's not like he they almost lost to like back. Boston College or anything. Mm. I oh. mean, Jordan Travis has better numbers and <laughs> played a better team. So, oh, I, 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 I said I didn't say that. <laughs> well, but like going back to Oklahoma and Texas, Oklahoma definitely won that game more than Texas lost it. But Sark, he got out coached there down the stretch. Yeah. Like it was like his defense was gas. He should have called a timeout, regrouped, the, especially when they get down to the goal line. Like, come on. Yeah, the clock's going to run out, but they're going to score before it has a chance to do that. I, um, as a former Texas fan and a Texas admirer, Mm. this is mid 2000s, Brett. Yeah, hey, we can go horns down. I prefer horns up, whatever. I'm not going to get upset. Uh, that was just, I mean, there was a lot of hype. It was one of the best Red River rivalry games that I've ever seen personally. It's just really disappointing that Texas didn't pull it out because I don't know. I was, I was kind of thinking national championship for Texas if they would have won that. They definitely had it in front of them. I mean, I don't really see them playing. Any anybody else like super super tough in their schedule? Um, I could be wrong about that, but really. they definitely had it right in front of them. 
if they just win that game. And I still think that they have a chance. If they go and play in the, the Big 12 championship game and they beat Oklahoma, because I'm sure that's who they're going to play, um, I think they have a real shot to get back in that playoff race. And I think, Tyler, that's what me, you, and our lo- resident Longhorn fan, Jimmy Nicole, were talking about Saturday. Yeah, night. yeah. It's It certainly still is all on the table for Texas because, like you said, run the table – Go to the Big 12 championship, redeem your one loss. It would be hard to keep them out. Yeah. Um, and maybe this is a long play for Texas. Uh, play the game close because you know how hard it is to beat a team two times in one year. I'm, I'm saying this is a long play. Quinn Ewers, big brain stuff. Um, do enough to, to make it look like a good loss, but in the end – show them nothing, and then at the end of the year, show them no mercy. <laughs> I mean, don't throw three interceptions and you probably win that game. Ooh. I know. that's He was trying to help them lose. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Brandon you gets sound it. Like, you sound like Brandon right now with your, Brandon gets <laughs> with your false narratives. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, uh, if TCU didn't beat Kansas State early last year, they'd probably go on to win the Big 12 championship game last year. So, I mean, or if the officials had counted that as a touchdown when the ball goes over the goal line in overtime, then it would have been a, then they would have gone 13 0 anyways. We're not You're slandering asking. officials on yeah. this show. Respect yeah, the call. This is a pro official podcast. <laughs> Respect the stripes. Jeez. Now, I mean, well, now granted, there's more things I, I'm upset about as somebody who's rooting for TCU in that game than, than the <laughs> officials there, but it, it's a tough look. Quinn Ewers, I, you know, I, I was with you early in the season where I didn't think he, Played, he finished out the year great at all. He didn't have 200 passing yards the last four or five games. Um, but 31 for 37, 346 yards. I mean, that's not a not a bad stat line. That's what he was. I mean, Ewers, yeah. Ewers isn't the answer, obviously. I mean, he's a placeholder for the guys they have in backup. I mean, they, they have Manning, who's going to be playing in probably two years. I know they have another guy who's waiting in the wings. He's a sophomore this year. He's going to be playing. He's supposed to be electric. I can't remember his name. I Malik Murphy. Yes, what dude. So, like, I mean, they – I've been, saying just a placeholder. This, I've been saying this for two years that Malik Murphy is the best quarterback that they have. There's something about that name, though, that Murphy name that just doesn't sit right with yeah. me. Yeah, it feels like he's got to play volleyball or something yeah, you know, sometime yeah. soon. Yeah. I, I, I Well, let me ask you this, Brooke. I, <laughs> obviously not like a high-end, you know, Heisman caliber quarterback, but do you think he's a really good placeholder quarterback while Sark gets the, the ship righted? Because that, that's what he yeah. feels like to me. I, I don't want to go too far overboard. Quinn Ewers is an above average college quarterback. But I certainly think at times he does hold Texas back. Great placeholder for Archer, Malik Murphy, or what have you. It just, when I watch him, there's just something missing. You know, he doesn't complete enough passes in the big games. He, he did battle and still, like you said, 31 for 37 is pretty fucking good with 340 passing yards. But three big mistakes where if you cut down on one or two of those, he probably gets his team to win. I just think when – if they do go to the playoff, could you imagine him going up a defense like Georgia or Michigan? I just – I think it would be a disaster. You mean the defense that gave up almost 400 passing yards to C.J. Stroud last year? I'm just saying. Georgia? I mean, I'm not saying just that Quinn Ewers is as good as, as C.J. Stroud. I'm, that's more of a shot at Georgia than – Trying to the same up. defense that held Max Duggan to seven points in the national championship, yes. I mean. What? Yeah. That yeah, was more so, I think, Max just too. the magic running out. Um, sure. Because Had nothing I, well, to do with the Georgia's defense. I'm sure. No, what I'm saying, though, is they shouldn't have been there. In, in, a, in a respectful way, They sh- I don't think they should have been there. Because on paper, they're frauds. On paper, <laughs> that Michigan team was miles better than that team, than Kansas or TCU rather. I mean, that's you, why that's why you play the game, yeah. but it's still. I think it was just their luck or their magic kind of running dry. Yeah, I I agree with that. 
Moving on before I get too upset about the TCU slander, a new set of rankings here on the, the guy Corn lives Hunter. in Texas one time and here he Bro, is. Like I, I saw I saw the <laughs> clip of TCU, Brandon loving TCU last week, and then I swear to God, the very next thing I saw was them just getting their shit pounded in on Sunday. Yeah. Crazy. I had a whole and TikTok TCU like watch out for TCU, watch yeah. out for the Horn Frogs, and they get beat up by West Virginia at home. I was hype, I bet on them, and now I lost my money. Yeah. So I'll be sending you an invoice in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> just send, it, send it over to the accounting team over here at Horn Frog Connection. <laughs> But uh, just kind of going through, through through my list here of, of rankings, um, a couple of different names up top. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, I kind of broke it up into tiers, like the top tier being teams who have a good win and hasn't had a whole lot of struggles. Now with Ohio State up there, that kind of depends on how you think of Notre Dame. I still think that that's a really good win. Um, and then the next tier, Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, Washington. You don't have a good win, but you also haven't struggled a whole lot. And then the final tier, um, you uh, don't have a good win, and you've had some struggles like Florida I State. Just, I I just hate your top two. I'm just gonna say I hate that. It, it feels weird, but I <laughs> I, I feel good about what, it. I mean, what about Ohio State playing like dog shit against Maryland made you want to move them up to two? They beat them by like three over and Michigan. Half touchdown. They beat them by what? what? Beat them like by three and a half touchdowns or something. They didn't. And wasn't Maryland it by was ten? Too. No, at, at it was really close for like one half, and then Ohio State ended up pulling away. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think it ended up being like 47 to 20 was, or something. Yeah, like it wasn't that. a close game. Certainly wouldn't put it as a as a struggle. I mean, terrible for comfort in my opinion to start the game. Wow. Yeah, but then you know, good yeah. teams you know pull out late. Unlike me, um, it, it, <laughs> never, it feels weird. I'm not. <laughs> I, but I'm not huge fair, on Ohio State, but that that Notre Dame win to me is a better win than Michigan, Oregon, Washington, Penn State, Georgia, USC, Florida State, or North Carolina have. So that's kind of my whole thought process there. Well, then Louisville should be in your top ten by that <laughs> that logic. You're not wrong. Yeah, I probably yeah with that logic. That was um, a miss by Brandon, I guess. Is Louisville? They don't have a loss, do they? They do not. No. They are six and zero. Oh. Were they on my list? They weren't even on my list here. I have a separate tier for losers like Texas and Alabama, but they didn't make the cut. Yeah, what, yeah that, mm-hmm. uh, it's a mess. I should have put them in instead of uh, instead of North Carolina for sure. It's Jack Plummer, right? Their quarterback for yeah. Louisville. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. I still don't know if he's related to um, Jake Plummer, like the snake, but I hope he is. It feels too strange to not be it to just be a coincidence. Yeah, hey, hey, Jack. I know you're a big time. Cornhusker pod guy, so yeah. you, wanna, you, you just want to send us a tweet. Yeah, tell us if you're if it's like your dad or something. That'd be sick. I, I hate that we revealed three friends of the program already this episode. That's <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to stay under wraps. I like well, random name. Yeah. You just gotta drop some names sometimes. Absolutely. And I mean we gotta use all the Jack Plummer clout while while we can. And that's a big <laughs> win against Notre Dame. I mean an eleven win oh, Jack he's from Dubuque, Iowa. Oh, born. I didn't know that. Shout out. I knew Number there was something wrong with it. What in the world? Hmm. Uh, and then he moved to he moved to Arizona. Okay. He's the brother of Arizona quarterback Will Plummer. Okay. okay. I don't sure. see anything about Jake. I'm Weird. I'm biased, but I think my top ten is better than better everything than I see everything. here personally. But what is it? I can I can run the list down. So one to ten, I have Georgia, Michigan, Oklahoma, Washington, Florida State, Penn State, USC, Oregon, Ohio State, and Texas. Incorrect. That's a solid top ten. You watch your mouth. All right, Florida State number one. That's crazy. Florida State is not better than Michigan. They're the best. I team. Believe that. No, they're the best team. They're good. They're my. They're they. They. Hey, they're outside looking in for the college football playoffs. That's where I have them. At. Absolutely not. Undefeated ACC champions team will absolutely be in the college football playoff. I mean, they I mean, have been running through opponents. I'm not gonna lie. Even though I hear really, that Boston College game is actually kind of close, really ran through Boston College. Really ran through uh, Clemson with an accountant for a kicker. You know, I didn't say it. Shoot. 
I oh, really, 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 ran really happy for them. SMU. Oklahoma really ran through Texas. Well, I mean, they beat Texas, which is a good team, yeah, which is more good. than – Florida State has also beat team. everybody they played, and they beat LSU by three touchdowns. So LSU stinks. Well, yeah. Brian so Kelly's he, their coach. I just told you this. Brian Kelly fucking yeah, remember stinks. that part. Excuse my language. They can only I do like, what's put in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe when they join right. a real conference. It's one just day, so – I'll the never understand – why you decided this is the hill that you want to defend, Brooke? Because they're going to win it all. Yeah, I mean, it's in Brooke's defense, it's a good hill to die on. I mean, they're not going to lose another game this year. But just the state of Florida sucks. So why? I mean, yeah, there's just no way. Good. They're super racist, super hateful <laughs> to our indigenous people. If, if you guys were picking out like, all of our Georgia <laughs> and Michigan hills to die on, that would be one thing. But like Brandon all of a sudden with Oklahoma and Ohio State, who I don't think either one of them are getting in the playoff. But I go. agree. I agree with Brandon's list because he. I think he did it the same way I've been doing it. What have you done for me lately? Uh, right. This isn't like easiest pass the playoff. I mean, then, yeah, Florida State would be number one. For sure, Georgia, Michigan would all be in the top three. Actually, if it's, it was easiest path to the playoff, it would be Michigan and Georgia. No, Florida State has a way easier path than either of those teams. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, they, they Michigan just, um, Georgia still plays play the SEC until team. like week eight. Florida State doesn't play another ranked team this entire season until the ACC championship game, and even That's, then, they, they might play not be ranked. one less than Michigan, and Michigan gets like two months to prepare for it. Yeah, but like their ranked team that they have to play is A, Penn State, right. who's going to be in the top 10, and yeah. B, Ohio State, who's going to be in the top five. A fraudulent Ohio State, who they're going to beat by probably three touchdowns again. Well, I, so, yeah, you know, I, 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 I agree with that. Yeah, I I don't disagree, but that's still a harder Penn thing State to do might than. be fraudulent too. They have a freshman quarterback, and they haven't played Dick either. Yeah, I mean, we'll see, but those are still harder it opponents than just Georgia. Just around Tech. fraudulent. Well, people start looking into him, and then he just starts stone fingers. Boo, what about you? What about you? What about you? <laughs> yeah. What about you? Huh? No, what about you? What are you hiding? No, what are you hiding? I asked you first. I'm not hiding anything. All my chips are on the table with Florida State, you scumbag. All right. All right, that was a little harsh. I take that back. No, 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 no. Can't take it back. But I want it on the record. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that was that was on me. Well, and I'm not trying just to a mean person. Yeah, oh. and I don't want to take <laughs> yeah, anything. That was, away. That was, that was mean. <laughs> and I don't want to take anything away from Florida State. I mean, their schedule is front heavy. They, they're I two do. toughest teams that they scheduled. Well, in theory, it was front loaded with LSU, Clemson. Turns out both those two teams stink. That's not Florida State's fault. It's not their mm-hmm. fault that Florida stinks it as bad. But I it just. just it's just crazy. All you can do is that's win not the a games crazy have. easy. I have way more respect for Florida State because obviously the ACC fucked up not giving them Miami or North Carolina. Did they dodge all three? They might play Louisville. Uh, well, they play Miami. Oh, that's who they play. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, but they might not be ranked because guess who plays Miami this week? Drake May and the Tar Heels, baby. That's going to be a good game. But. Yes. Well, probably FSU not. at least went out and scheduled LSU right. right away. Where Michigan's playing Colorado School of the Mines, Hutchinson Community College, Western Oklahoma Southern Tech. Listen, yeah. you play who you play, and you if you I win, just, well, you win. I mean, I hate them. Usually, the ACC does to get a pass because they have the fourth non-conference game, like a bunch of pansies. But Florida State, yeah, they, they go out and they schedule two Power Five teams in the process. So, uh, I'll give credit where credit's due there. Oklahoma did their job. They beat Texas. Did they play anyone else tough? No. Well, I mean, they didn't struggle at do all. They, do they play like they have a really, this or they have a cake scheduled the rest of the way do they yeah i can't remember i looked it up on saturday but it's really cake i don't remember exactly yeah who. i mean the yeah big 12 is bad this year there's no mm-hmm. there's no oh I mean, yeah I, well, Brooke, I, did you I, hear him yeah the big 12 is bad this year i will admit when i am wrong <laughs> which hasn't happened a whole lot this year especially with henry carberg or jeff sims i've been right about that whole situation this whole time you and 
Tyler were both dead wrong week one, saying LSU was going to clap cheeks. I was wrong about that. Yeah, I was wrong. Well, I, I was also – yeah, I mean, you can't you can't be right about a team that is just so, so bad. But you also can't sit there and give credit to a team that beat them when they are a bad team. So it's a two-way street there, pal. And I'll also say this. For Florida yeah. State, for me, it was like, I, I got to see it. Like, yeah, I know that they have a lot of talent. I know they beat up a bad Oklahoma team last year, but I got to see it, and I've seen it. It's different now. I guess, yeah. I'm just excited to see what unfolds at the end of the year. You guys are going to have to go into hiding if Florida State wins it all, and I'm going to have to go into hiding if they don't win it all. No, I'm going to Tallahassee. It's like I've been a Florida State fan my entire life. I mean, it'll be fun, but I mean, also just remember – just remember the, the one person on this panel who didn't have who hasn't had Florida State in their top ten all year. When you, when you oh yeah, that. well he's just he doesn't know ball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way, Oklahoma plays Kansas. That might be their like they play UCF, Kansas, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, BYU, TCU. Well, so not a whole lot. Yeah, that's a, I'm sure uh, Jalen Daniels Bunyans will be flaring up that week and have to <laughs> sit out again. Pansy. Didn't need him against UCF by any means. Fuck, oh, I crazy. hate that guy. Last two years, every big game freaking Kansas has had, he hasn't played in. That's true. Show me you want to be here. Perfect, fellas. That's all I had for this episode. Lots to get into. A great slate of college football this week. Not a great slate for for me and uh, Tyler on the pickums. So we'll talk about that later this week. Unfortunately, you know, I guess I, I, I put everything out there. I, you know, I'm wrong sometimes. It is what it is. Um, anything else you fellas would like to add before we, we get after it? <laughs> yeah, Tyler, actually, I wanted to ask you guys. Go. Sorry, you brought up Miami, and I wanted to ask you your thoughts on I can't believe we didn't talk about Miami. What a disaster. Oh, my God. That was heartbreaking. They deserve the, it. The crazier thing is that's not the first time Mario Cristobal yeah. has done that. And he got away with it the first time with the clock running out. And I think it's hilarious that they pan to like the O lineman on the side man sideline going, "What the fuck are we yeah. doing?" Like you know, it's bad when a twenty year old kid is calling out his fucking head coach. Yeah. And it's crazy because like they still were in such a great place to win that game after they botched that. All you have to do is not let Georgia State score a sixty yard touchdown here with fifteen seconds left, and they couldn't even get that together. They, I think it was like two plays. They went up yeah, and down yeah. the field for like eighty yards with no timeouts. Yeah, it was like the, the whole thing where like, oh, well, we're just going to try to get chunks in and get chunks. And then all of a sudden they have a wide receiver running down the middle of the field yeah, that's wide crazy. open. Wide open. And like, I feel like if they, if Miami just wins that game, I feel like we're not, not necessarily maybe putting them in the top 10, but they're on like on the outside looking in of the top 10. You know, we're like holding them in high regards because I mean, they're, you know, 5-0 and oh at that point. Uh, <laughs> you know, really positive momentum rolling, especially with Cristobal in his second, ten, second year or under his tenure. Oh, you down too? I didn't know you could do you down. Yeah. Oh, damn, dude! I could but, see. Uh, lose the game I could now. see Miami like now beating North Carolina. Just something totally that doesn't make sense. That I, would be I mean, those. Those two coastal conferences just cannibalize each other every year. It seems. Yeah. Oh, well, and that's happy. what I've been saying about the Pac-12 this year is that like they have a lot of the best teams in the country, but they're just gonna they play each other. So it's yeah. they're gonna yeah. rack up losses. Utah's not. Now it doesn't have a cam rising for, for the near future. Um, USC didn't look good at all against until the very end last week. And, you know, but I'm, we, we might actually end up with like a Georgia, uh, Ohio state, Michigan, and whoever the big 12 champion is. Oh, I'd kill myself. Oh, and Florida state, Florida. Fl- Florida state will get in. I want a little chaos, you know, me too. That- I just want to see some new stuff. Yeah. Don't be Washington or USC the 12 team playoff this year. That would be, That'd be so interesting to see yeah. see it all shake yeah. out. That's what you guys should do, by the way. Whenever the season ends, just do your <laughs> twelve team playoff bracket. Like, if then what happens? Well, I put together I a, a graphic last week on, with our rankings for the twelve team playoff. I, the internet issues. Yeah, thanks for listening, doing that. Yeah, real, uh, real. I listened, but I, was, I wanted my, I wanted it to be my idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. when I brought it up. Mm-hmm. I mean, Spencer was a huge fan of the, of our playoff system. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> so was Jack Plummer. Yeah. Well, perfect, fellas. That's all that I had for this week. Anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, oh, by the way, Brandon, I went four for five in my bets. Bookie so. Brook, you did, but not your college pick Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was bad. Yeah, different that's show, good. brother. 
yeah, yeah bad week yeah. um i got a new strategy this week that that i'm going to implement that i'm pretty excited the about. it's going to go super well <laughs> the <Luke laughs> I, love Doyle strategy I, love I love a new betting strategy happening. i mean i'm not going to give anything away but i'll win the lab it is what it is well perfect fellas that's all that we have daily college football content here on corner connection even our stinky big 12 show with how stinky all the big 12 teams are still a lot of fun stinky. every day we got something for you stinky stinky Thank you.